anyone else that tried to con- ha- handle this would fall short. This is a master stroke of a novel. Start to finish, this is... No one else would have the balls to do this. I, I, I'm just saying that off rip. This is beyond the capabilities of many of the creators I've seen writing books in my life. Maybe not everybody will get the same mileage of it uh, out of it as I did, but anyone else that would try to make this narrative would do something childish with it. What if, new segment, what if Nazis won World War II? This is not a what if all this segment. Ladies and gentlemen, I finally read one of the most like notorious and talked about books that I have never gotten to read in my circles, if not yours. Um, the Man in the High Castle by Philip K. Dick. And I want to talk to you guys about it because I think it's actually a fascinating book. And it completely threw me completely threw me for a loop as to what it was about. And it is probably one of the most enjoyable books I have ever read. Um, It is just a vibe from start to finish. It's very hard to describe. I think it's the first. No, do I like do androids dream of electric sheep is Philip K. Dick, right? Not Asimov. Okay. The man in the high castle. So um, this is a book from, I think, the 70s or 60s era, whenever, whenever Philip K. Dick was making stuff. And it is a book about if the Axis powers had won instead of the Allies and um, kind of the after effects of that. America is divvied up into different states. I won't get too much into that. Um, and, of course, the Nazis have control of most of Europe, Italy, also was part of the Axis, but kind of just disintegrated and was absorbed by fits and starts into the Nazis. Um, On the other side, you have the Japanese who took over the Pacific Island, the Pacific side of the Americas going into right around the Colorado Rockies in that era is the area is like the American free States or something like that. I can't quite remember all of it. Um, I would have to write it down. It doesn't really, really matter, though, because that part that you would think was the most interesting thing about Man in the High Castle is not. Uh, the The story follows a small cast of characters, most of whom have barely just a, a tangential connection to the other characters. Um, your vibe going into it would probably be something more along the lines of like Wolfenstein, the Wolfenstein remakes. You know, we're going to have a BJ Blazkowicz type character. We're going to bring back the revolution. We're going to overthrow the Nazis and, and take back the world. And that never happens, nor is it really a part of the story at all. Um, how do you even get into this? The, the entirety of this book is like an, an absurdly cozy fever dream in the most uncomfortable way possible. First off, you never go to the Nazi areas. Um, the Nazis hold, like I said, the East Coast. They are described as absolute barbarians. Even people that are pro-Nazi hate living in or dealing with the Nazi area because, of course, the Nazi area is full of Nazis. Um, Hitler has long since been remanded to the care of a nursing home for um, late-stage syphilitic issues, and his war cabinet and names that you've heard, Goebbels, um, others, you know what I mean? They um, have kind of divvied up the Reich and are, I think, Hans Bormann is in charge of everything and he is old, very old and getting ready to die. And so the Nazis are kind of planning out who is going to take the secession. And if it's going to be one of a series of the leaders of different aspects of military might in the country, is it going to be the secret police? Is it going to be the police police? Is it going to be the army? Um, and that's kind of all happening to the side. And those conflicts are all discussed third, fourth, fifth, sixth hand from the actual plot 
of the book, which is all based around a series of business interactions in San Francisco and um, a woman's journey from Colorado or like in, through the Colorado States. Um, to meet the author of a book called The Grasshopper, the literal eponymous man in the high castle, um, whose name I can't remember off rip. Um, he wrote a book called The Grasshopper. I'll get that. I'll get into that in a bit. That's the man in the high castle. That's the title. But we have um, her that's okay. Yeah, I'll give you the back. This is a good. I'll just read the synopsis for the background. In The Man in the High Castle, alternative history, Giuseppe Zangara assassinates President elect FDR in 1933 resulting in the continuation of the great depression and the policy of united states non-interventionism at the start of world war ii in america american action allows nazi germany to conquer and annex continental europe and the soviet union into the reich the extermination of the jews romani bible students slavs and all the peoples whom the nazis considered subhuman ensued the axis powers then jointly conquered africa and still compete for the control of south america in 1962 Imperial Japan invaded the west coast of the United States while Nazi Germany invaded the east coast. The surrender of the Allies ended World War II in 1947. Um, none of that matters aside from as set dressing. I, I shit you not. And I know that sounds crazy. But the, 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 real, the real plot of the book circles uh, just a bunch of randos. There's a guy named Frank Fink who is a um, Jewish person who escaped. He was a, a World War II combatant. He fought in Europe but escaped after the surrender, even though he was supposed to be remanded to a literal execution camp um, and now lives in um, the safest area of the Pacific States of America. And he manufactures fake weapons, um, not for war fighting reasons, even though he was a soldier, he was like, I'm going to do a revolution. And then he's just like, uh, time got the better of me. And he finds that he likes the Japanese and does not mind the Japanese occupation of America all that much. And it's much better than the Germans and the Japanese are kind of like easy to get along with, despite their kind of weird pseudo fascist, uh, leanings. There is also, um, God, I want to make sure I get all these. His wife's Julia Frank is a judo instructor in Cannon City, Colorado. Um, Ch Childen, yes, Robert Childen. There you go. Uh, Robert Childen is a racist <laughs> who is an antique salesman uh, who made his money after the end of the war by basically um, showing Japanese people who had this uh, these wealthy Japanese businessmen and people who are coming to divvy up the United States and start new industry over there. Um, he, they had a fascination with American collectibles, um, authentic American art objects. They called it that were from before America fell and Americans stopped having like a real American culture. And so it's stupid toys and shit. Um, he gets his start with milk caps, bottle caps and the Japanese fuck go crazy about it. He starts selling these antiques, buffalo heads, all sort of, all the kind of horse shit bric-a-brac you would see off of like, you know, Route 66 across the United States um, in little like tourist shops. And he, he sells those things. Another guy's Entagomi, whose name I will never forget because Mr. Entagomi. I listened to this as an audiobook. Um, I just want to make sure I get all the, the, the names right as I'm reading through stuff. Because it's just a vibe. I remember Childen as being the store owner. Uh, Mr. Entogomi. Entogomi is the fucking shit. He is a highly placed Japanese businessman who is part of um, the, the, the upper class society and trade organiz organizers of, of, of stuff that's going on in the, in the Pacific States. He has interactions with children because he buys stuff from children and people that work for or around him buy stuff from children. Children shortly after the beginning of the book finds out that there are fakes because people like Frank Fink have been making fake versions of these things, which almost everybody knows about except for children because children is the slowest human being on the uptake in the world. He's just the stupidest person. Yes. Everyone's they're all, a Maribus. <laughs> They're a Maribus like crazy. Um, Juliana is the main. Uh, eh, not really. Um, Juliana is like, she's kind of like, 
Sorry, so Frank has a uh, wife, Juliana Frank, who is his ex-wife, and she's a judo instructor. I can't remember why they broke up, but Juliana is fucking crazy. Crazy, crazy. Uh, which we find out later. Um, and she's just an extremely impulsive kind of flighty waitress. She's in the book a lot, but I wouldn't really call her the main character. I think the main character would literally be the Oracle, which is a whole other thing. I cannot describe the entirety of the world building in The Man in the High Castle, which never really leaves a little pocket of the world that's like that big. Um, Juliana, we meet, she starts to fall in with a guy named um, Joe Cinderella, who says he is... um, Cinderella, Cinderella, Cinderella. Joe Cinderella, who is an Italian um, like truck driver, maybe, but we find out that he has a series of complicated issues with his past, um, and uh, he's not even. Well, spoilers. There's all. It's all spoilers. He's not even fucking Italian, but I think maybe he is. But also, there, there there's, there's crazy shit happens. So most of the plot revolves around just the personal lives of what these guys are going through with frank um it's a realization that the inevitable collapse of the memorabilia industry is coming because they're faking it because there's only so much shit out there to sell to people and they have just been making fakes they've just been making forgeries and fakes and so he wants to try to maybe make some new stuff because he's a talented machinist and he wants to make some jewelry and so some stuff happens, basically, where they're going to start doing that. Um, what's his name? Robert Childen. Childen wants to increase his place in society uh, uh, because he wants to just fit in better with the Japanese because it's a better way to make money, and that's kind of been his goal the entire time. As the plot goes on, he is fucking racist. He finds himself dissatisfied with his place in society and the nature of society itself because he kind of finds that he's a stranger in his own land and he finds that like kind of disgraceful in a, in a deep, deeply powerful way. Um, and Tagomi, who is a very highly placed older businessman, does everything right. He is the epitome of a Japanese citizen in this era, especially one given his very high-ranking uh, position in the Trade Commission or, or whatever it is he's a part of. And he finds himself, even though he is a person who prides himself on like honesty, straightforwardness, and being a uh, an upstanding member of society, he finds himself involved in, necessarily, a spy plot with... Um, Oh, what's his name? Hans Rudolf Wegner, also known as Baines, is a guy who's pretending to be Swedish. He says that he is a Jew. I can't remember, though. Um, he, he, he's a spy, basically. There's a German defector, a Nazi defector. Um, he's part of the Anwehr, which is just one of the many different parts of the secret police state that is uh, Germany. He has come to America because his... He's actually a Waffen SS. Waffen SS is the guys that he's aligned with. But even worse than them are the black shirts who are like the actual like former Gestapo. They call them like the SD now. They're even worse. The power vacuum that occurs in Germany that everyone knows is going to occur is going to go in basically one of two directions. Either his people, the Waffen SS, which are the worst, but like not the worst actually, if they're in charge, it's going to be kind of more business as usual. This, the Nazis are going to space in plastic rocket ships by now, by the way. They're, they're on Mars. Or so they say. It's, I think, strongly implied in the subtext that they're lying. There's a lot of lying going on with the Germans, and they're very cool with it. Because there's also, like, they do low atmosphere shuttle launches, and the... Like BMV, it's like a fucking Bavarian Motorworks like rocket or a VW Volkswagen rocket is like barely not shattering and exploding as it lands. And they're like, there's a lot of accidents with those. So it's kind of inferred that they're saying that they're conquering the solar system, but maybe, maybe they're not. Plastics and the plastics trade is a very big part of it. It's awesome. Um, but that's kind of like it. 
most of the rest of it is just about interpersonal connections and people's like deep feelings about who they are in society in a way that I never thought that this was going to occur. Um, I'll, the the there's the San Francisco plot basically, and then there's the Colorado plot, which is much smaller and more contained. That is Juliana and um, the Italian guy, fucking uh, Cinadello, who we find out is not. Her whole thing is that she falls in with the Cinadella guy, and every fucking Juliana scene is cracked. It is psychotic. It's like you feel her being swept along. It takes a little bit to kind of get a, a, an understanding. And I also haven't introduced the most important part of the fucking show yet. Um, but you get a feeling that she's being kind of swept along because she makes decisions. She's like, I'm terrified of this guy. I don't want to be near him. They are now having sex. I am terrified of being in a room with this guy. I don't want to go anywhere with him. I, I, maybe I should be away from him because he's so dangerous. We are going to go on a road trip. <laughs> the... uh Oh, that's a big stretch right there. That's a little fella. Look at him go, dude. Pilates, bunny Pilates. Um, they go on a road trip, basically, um, to meet the author of The Man in the High Castle, or The Man in the High Castle, who is the author of uh, The Grasshopper. They just keep calling it The Grasshopper after a passion, but it's The Grasshopper Lies Heavy, which is one of the most fun parts of this. This novel is highly well woven it's an extremely efficient book it was like a nine hour listen but it's like constantly like there's so much fucking going on and it's just like bubbles for your brain it's fucking awesome so you they they do all of the world building for post america america right but in that also is the grasshopper lies heavy which almost every single person has some sort of interaction with or a comment on with a few notable exceptions and all of them have their own different opinions, but they're all swept up in the possibilities of it. And it describes, it is also an alternative history. It's an alternative history in this alternative history of if the allies had won. That is not our version of reality. It's a different version of how the allies had won and what happens afterwards. It comes down to a conflict between America and Britain for control of the world. Um, of which Britain pulls out ahead, which is just hilarious. Uh, one of the most notable parts is that the grasshopper lies heavy, which is an alternative universe to this uh, ostensibly the worst possible situation for, we would think, every single person that interacts with the grasshopper finds it to be distasteful somehow and kind of unacceptable. Like they all have issues with how it turns out. Which is amazing because, and it, this is something I would have to actually do a bunch of quotes from. I'm sorry, I should have quotes, but this is, I'm listening to this one um, while I'm doing all of my moving and stuff, so I don't have time to write everything down. But just in, in a general sense, um, the aspects of the book and how it's made and how it's constructed and they're breaking it down feel like Philip K. Dick literally telling you that his own alternative history is going to be inherently flawed and it's going to be completely different. Even if the end result is the same, the effects and how things occur are also going to be virulently different, insanely um, sideways. And it goes, it goes nuts. I have not yet still introduced the most psychotic aspect of this, which you would think has already happened. No. The craziest part of this book is something called the Oracle, which almost every single person interacts with or has some sort of like, uh, they, they do something with it, ex with a notable exception of all Germans. I believe none of the Germans fuck with or even, I think, talk about it. Um, the Man in the High Castle is a book that is probably worth me doing a full cover to cover slow reread i would say that this is one of those teachable in a class levels of book um the oracle is psychotic it is some sort of uh chinese japanese mystic um religion i can't remember from the introduction of it how like it kind of came about but everyone fucks with it and there are volumes of interpretive data and basically you do games of chance while asking it a question and then you interpret via the games of chance 
what the fuck is happening um going to happen in your real life and they're kind of like these broad things like you will go and like a, a chance meeting will have a great professional like re, re, a great professional thing but you must bring libations to a meeting that is uh, a surprise meeting or something like that and um different people kind of get freaked up freaked out about how it's going to work and other people are like they let it kind of control their life um, Juliana specifically is like very, very into it. And she lets it just sl- sweep her away. Frank is kind of always a little bit nervous about it. Robert Chilton is very invested to into it and kind of barely, you can feel kind of barely understands it, but it's constantly working for him. Everyone is running around this goddamn Oracle. The biggest spoiler is they eventually meet the man in the high castle and he wrote the alternative history with the Oracle, using the Oracle to write the history, which he couldn't tell anybody outright because the Oracle told him basically through his divinations that if he directly told anyone, it would steal all of his book royalties, which he thought was unfair of the Oracle, but didn't want to test the Oracle because the Oracle basically told him he's no more than a typist, (laughs) which is technically true on a meta level because no matter what, the Oracle is literally Philip K. Dick, and he's literally telling his fictional character, who's almost a stand-in for him, that he didn't actually write the thing because he literally didn't because he's a fictional character and anything that he wrote, Philip K. Dick wrote. And the book is even crazier than that. It has one of my favorite sequences in anything. Um, the plot with Entegomi. Entegomi is one of my favorite characters. I don't know why. I like all of them, even though they're bad. Um, Entegomi's plot is great because he is kind of a hyper-competent guy and he's also a Westabu and he has one of the fake pistols on him. And basically, um, oh, I, keep, I keep forgetting his name uh, because all these names sound very similar to me. Baines, Mr. Baines. Um, Baines meets him um, and B- Baines is basically, like I said, he's trying to cause an issue the 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 conflict between the nazis are going to end with status quo or h bombing the entirety of the japanese home islands and the entirety of the asian and possibly the american coastal areas where they've taken over in order to provide uh full nazi takeover of the world there's a strong insinuation that that result will more than likely create the holocaust that ends everything because People are starting to see like this in deep insanity um, in a lot of Germans because there's, I think a a suggestion that there's like inbreeding programs that may or may not be happening in a lot of like genetic experimentation that are actually making native born Germans fucking psychotic. Like they're actually like predisposing towards like slavish, insane people, something like that. Um, Hey, I can see that I'm German. Um, (laughs) Yeah, German. Ein klein bit. <laughs> klein bisschen. Um, he, Bane's whole thing is to talk to Tagomi basically in order to create a surreptitious meeting between um, Bane's and a uh, Japanese, highly placed Japanese general from the original war. A really old man who's traveling undercover and stuff. And that's a whole little spy plot that pops out. And um, it works in their favor and they meet, but they still don't know how things are going to turn out. That's the entirety of Bane's presence in this thing. And then um, during that, the SD people send a strike force of stormtroopers to basically attack the building, kill that guy, or at least drag him back to Germany for a quick trial and termination. He eventually does go back to Germany and kind of gets taken away, which suggests that his people one to some degree um, in the the power struggle over Borman. There's so much shit. There's so much shit going on. I cannot describe everything. The, the This is the spy plot, not the part I care about. I just need to tell you why Antigomi's great. It's the almost last hour of the book. Um, Tagomi has to shoot somebody, two men with a little fucking American pistol. Pop, pop, pop. He actually does fan fire. Amazing. Um, and he kills two of the uh, two of the Nazi attackers, and everyone kind of survives. That's our version of good guys. 
and he's a Buddhist and this causes a deep conflict in him. And even though he's like basically like this major CEO at the uh, Nippon Times building, please. He spends an hour of me reading or listening to this, just having a full mental breakdown from having had to kill two Nazis who were there to kill him and potentially cause the end of the world. But even that caused a breakdown in him. And during this, he is kind of just wandering around and running across, incidentally, all of the other subplots of the other characters and not realizing the great importance of all of these tiny moments as they interact with him. And he eventually has like a fucking heart attack and like comes back. I'm spoiling, I'm spoiling all of it, dude. It's a fucking spoiler. Jesus fucking Christ. <laughs> fucking goofballs. Um, and, and this is still, I will tell you this right now. There aren't, this is not spoilers. You, you, this is not a book that can be spoiled. I can tell you everything that happens and you will still hear more of it. I, you have to read the entire book to get all of it. Um, him wandering around having a fucking mental breakdown in this thing. And it's got not nothing next to nothing to do with like our vibes relative to like world war two or like how we would have felt about it. It is this own man's personal journey to like kind of overcome the soul crushing guilt of killing two guys who basically had it coming. And it's, it's like a beautiful uh, heartbreaking moment. And it, it's connected to a lot of other aspects of the plot, which I won't hyper get into. And I love it. The characters are fucking great. Um, Childen, who was a racist, just an out and out racist. He's a fucking moron. He's like one of the first big scenes with him is him desperately trying to find a black person to force to carry his bags because he doesn't want the Japanese to see him carrying his own bags because he feels like that will like diminish him in place. Children's entire thing is about not understanding being so dedicated to trying to understand your place in society while not understanding what causes you to have that place. Basically he takes everything as kind of rote um, and in surface level and the depths of him are in turmoil at all times, like chaotic. He is just a criminal minded uh, vindictive, shitty little rat of a guy. Um, and he, he's like pro Nazi. He's like, I think, well, I think all fucking all worked out. And his entire arc, uh, comes to a head when he's trying to impress this young Japanese couple. One the girl is very, very hot. Um, and he, uh, he talks to them and goes and meets them at an apartment and stuff. And cause they're like, we want to like furnish our apartment with this American shit. And he doesn't get that. They're gently trying to lead him to talk about America and like that. He likes America and maybe doesn't like the Germans and stuff. And like, doesn't like what has happened to his country because he is a guy that sells American collectibles. So they are kind of like inviting him in, at least in my interpretation of it, as a guy who um, has a deep connection to this place that they're now moving to. And um, it's probably maybe like a little bit base, like a cool white guy to meet. And they find out that he's he's racist and, and kind of stupid and clearly horny for the chick because he's constantly staring at her. And he's like, I don't think they noticed. And it's like they, they very obviously noticed. <laughs> Um, but he eventually, uh, finds that his entire industry is about to collapse because there are frauds going on and it may be like the ultimate humiliation for him and everything's going to not be purposeful anyway. And then he starts feeling like an alien in his own country. And he's like, well, who am I? If I'm an alien here and I feel like an alien inside, like, am I even, am I even real? Like, what is America? Like, what, what, what is, what is the point of me being here? Like, who are these strangers in my land that are buying bric-a-brac and useless shit from me and why do I have to fucking respect them and it's very fascinating because you see in him that even the person who is most uh of the conquered even the person who is most of the conquered uh, uh a quisling basically like a I am dedicated to this this cause his own feelings that draw him to being sympathetic to his uh, conquerors are the same feelings that will eventually inevitably lead him 
to having revolutionary thoughts of overthrowing them or of being resistant to them. And he starts throwing off the kind of um, vibes that he's trying to, to put out the entire time. He kind of leaves this faux Japanese um, fitting in that he's been trying to do behind him. And that's just one character. There's so many, like there are two that's him and Tagomi. Juliana's great. Frank is great. Baines is great. And even some of the secondary characters that you kind of run into here and there, there's a Nazi that's uh, in there for two seconds. And even he's fascinating. He's like the head Nazi of San Francisco, basically. And he is a fascinating individual to listen to because even he's just like, there is no black and white in this. You would think the most black and white possible thing. And it is in a mo in the most, I, if I had to sum up, the man in the high castle. It is the most hopeful human, um, de deep understanding, uh, narrative that I have read in a while placed in a setting that you would think would be nothing but sheer miserable dystopia. You would feel like you, anyone else that tried to con ha handle this, would fall short. This is a master stroke of a novel. Start to finish, this is... No one else would have the balls to do this. I, I, I'm just saying that off rip. This is beyond the capabilities of many of the creators I've seen writing books in my life. Maybe not everybody will get the same mileage of it, uh, out of it as I did, but anyone else that would try to make this narrative would do something childish with it. They would be Nazis bad, America good, or maybe America flawed, but like Nazis bad and we'll start with that seed and grow it out. They ignore the Nazis as something more than basically an existential threat. And then when they're not that, they're just people that are kind of in society and um, you see the humanity in everybody, whether they're bad or good, and kind of the depth of their interactions and the interwoven nature of how people and society work is on display full bore, and it is just a masterstroke. One of the most recommendable novels I think I will ever read. I loved it. I was reading it while I was extremely stressed out too, and I don't have like a perfect grasp on it i would say it is one that if i got my hands on a paper copy i would break my normal rule and i might reread through it just because it is so dense and so good so fucking good there's nothing wasted there is nothing uh nothing to skim over it is just fucking money um and then juliana's plot is also great too i will save the end of that um, because that is the one thing where I, I don't, I almost don't want to infect other people's understanding. I re round Juliana is the last character. Juliana is the last character in the show base or in the, in the book basically as a, as a POV character and her narration or the narration around her provides the ending. I re listened to the ending with her I think seven or eight times repeatedly hitting the, the rewind button to listen to it again and again and again and try to actually understand what the fuck was happening. And I still got it and it's cracked. It is such a fuck. It's such a wonderful, like, fuck you. Um, I don't want to get into it. I, I think I will save that. That can be something. If you guys, by the way, if you ever want to talk about books or anything like that, there's a what you're reading section on the discord pop in there if you guys end up reading um man in the high castle or going over it i just literally just for the very ending ending of it and if you have read it you know what i mean and if you haven't uh you don't get into that it's deeper than just the oracle was the whole thing all the time you, you've got to get into it you have got to get into it why the no reread rule um because i have too many books to read so I have a rule against uh, rereading things unless I absolutely have to or really desperately want to. But yeah, that's it. Um, 
the man in the high castle, Philip K. Dick. Hard recommend. Um, I would keep I would keep a paper copy of this on my bookshelf. This would be a a, def, a bookshelf keeper. Phenomenal novel. Um, out of left field. I liked it even better than uh, Do Androids Dream of Electric Sheep, which is also very good, but just nothing compared to this. Uh, after after a bunch of reading like Ben Shapiro and shit, this is the one that I got into, and I'm like mind blown. And I can say too that. It is not an aspect of just listening to it on Audible. Um, you could th- this book is good enough where you can listen to it, not like in the background. I am also listening right now. I'm about halfway through Starship Troopers. I'll probably finish Starship Troopers by like next week, and I'll be ready to talk about that at some point. Like and like subscribe. And like, like, and like, and subscribe. Like, like and like subscribe. Like and subscribe. You're just so I can't look at you. He's a fella. He's a little guy.